Back to the back to the dinam of mezuzah. Okay, a house that's not made to live permanently does not mean need a mezuzah. Let's say you put up a sukkah for eight days because it's not established for 30 days. You're not planning to live there for 30 days. Then you don't put up a mezuzah on a sukkah. Or there are many, in olden times, they used to set up stores for the market days. Let's see, it was a week, a, mar- a market week. So they used Sunday to... Put, huh? Yeah, but they swap meat, whatever. So they used to put up, but it wasn't there for 30 days. So then it didn't need a mezuzah. But let's say today we have stores that are permanent, basically, you're there always. So stores, offices, things like that would need a mezuzah because you eat there, you work there, even if you don't sleep there. Bottom line is you do eat there, you do work and there. Some workers sleep there. And some workers sleep on the job, yeah. They say it's only for, for home, not, not for office. It doesn't say that. It says, Beisachu On your houses and on your gates. Gates is not where you live. Any room that anything that's used. So in fact, there's a, a very interesting shaila. I know in the hospital here in Cedars, they have mezuzahs. But the truth of the matter is, it says in Aloha, a hospital doesn't need mezuzahs. Even if somebody is in a room for more than 30, 30 days... But the bottom line of it is, um, you, it's not your room. Because they can move you from room to room. It's not, you rented a room, you didn't rent a room. You rented a... Uh, no. Because it's basically on the one that rents. For instance, if a Jew owns an apartment building, and the tenants are non-Jews, he doesn't have to put a mezuzah anywhere. If there are Jews and non-Jews in the building, so then the communal doors, like the front door that everybody uses, that really should have a mezuzah. But the, the, the halach is mezuzah is chayva sador. Mezuzah is the obligation of the one that lives there. If you own a house and you rent um, an apartment building and you rent it to Goyim, you don't need mezuzahs on the Goyim's apartment. If somebody has a live-in housekeeper, though, and they have their own room. You do need them. That room does need a mezuzah because you're not renting the room. They're just sleeping there. It's your house, so you would need a mezuzah there. In fact, they have a whole... Uh, in Halacha discusses, uh, years ago, ships and boats. People traveled across the oceans, right? So they're there for an extended period of time. So they write that it basically it's not made to live permanently, and therefore you wouldn't need a mezuzah. But... Halacha says, what happens today if you own a yacht? People that own a yacht, yeah? A yacht is a boat. It's yours permanently. So you would need to put mezuzahs on all the doors of the yacht. If you, if the Jew owns it. Now, what's the din? I hope to have this problem. And this, uh, you know what? It's not a good problem to have, by the way. Uh, it makes him a sugar. Anyway, uh, what's the din? There's a very common case. You find couples that are intermarried. A Jew and with a non-Jew. Now, does that need a mezuzah or not? So the din is, the machlek is, if a shutfis, a partnership between a Jew and a Goy, needs a mezuzah or not. So the halacha is, you put up without a bracha. Okay, so let's say, i just tell you another example. You're in a college dorm, whatever. You have roommates. Some of them are Jewish, some of them are not Jewish. Where well, you have two kids, uh, one Jewish, one not. So, logically, you put up a mezuzah without a bracha. Because many opinions hold you would need a mezuzah. Some opinions say you don't. So, again, what do you do? You put it up without without uh, bracha. Or in the marshal, you own an RV. Somebody owns an RV. So, there's a whole shayla in the If an RV uh, needs a mezuzah or not. Now, normally, you rent an RV for a week, two, three, three weeks even. No problem. In fact, there's a whole shayla in Allah, even though in New- I know in New York they do it. But there's Marshall bungalows, bungalow colony. You go in the Caskills, right? You go to the to bungalows. Does it need a mezuzah or not? So I'm bossing right. It's only temporary. But the bottom line, if you go every year for two months, uh, many opinions say you should have a mezuzah. What? Is the law of mezuzah for the business is the same as the house? Like, it's which way? I mean. Every door has to have in a business or just one outside? Ideally, uh, we hold every door should have a mezuzah in a business. 
Uh, again, unless if it's a partnership with a guy, then yeah. But again, every door should have without a bracha. Um, if the if the door there's a door there's a gate and a door. Like a gate is like a you know a metal of a door, and then there's a door is like right mm-hmm. next to each other. Uh, both of them has to have the uh, no. There's one door post in between. Yeah, so that's enough. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, because you have to open to get the. I understand. Sometimes, though, before you come into, an ent- into the door of a house, you have an archway right outside the door. That was me. Spanish-style houses, right? Mm-hmm. An archway, which is a doorway, that would need a mezuzah. Or like we said the other day, if you have a driveway next to your house, right? <laughs> and many driveways have an arch, in, in the, or one or two sometimes. Those would need mezuzahs because it's a doorway. It doesn't have a door, so you don't make a brach on it, like we learned. Just but like a carport? Huh? Like a carport? What do you mean a carport? The one that goes like around? It depends. If it's taka for, if it's the tzuras pesach, if it has two mezuzahs, as they're called, two doorposts, with a lentil on top, it would need. If there's nothing, it just goes up to the roof, and then you have the roof on top. Then you would need. So the new building that you're going in, that, that thing, you're going to have a mezuzah there too. If I'm there, yeah. Okay. So what, once you say bracha, uh, you, you, don't, you do the whole house. You don't have to do bracha everywhere, right? No, if, if you're putting, we learned this already. If you're putting up, let's say one time you put, let's say you have 10 mezuzahs you need, and you're only putting up five, that's all you have. So when you put up the five, you make one bracha for the five. Okay? The next day or two days later, you're having another five, you make another bracha. At one time, the mezuzahs you're putting up at the same time, you make one bracha for all of them. But like we said, you have to make the bracha on the doorway that has a door. Because that for sure needs to have a mezuzah, and therefore for sure you make a bracha. And then you take it off, you check it, and then you put it back on, you say bracha again? So then it depends. Some people hold that if it's down for a few days, when you put it back up, even if it's kosher, you make a new bracha. Some people say, uh, no, if it's kosher, you don't make a new bracha. Well, we make a bracha. If it's down for a few days, we make a bracha. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We make a bracha if it's down for a few days. Not right away, you know. You get back the next day, then you don't make a bracha. But you send it there and it comes back, you know, then they do, and you make a bracha. So every time you send to check them, you need to make a bracha because they'll never bring it to you the next day. Correct. Oh, really? You put it back up with a bracha? If it's a few days later, you make a bracha. Um, there's a whole shal in fact about a shul if a base that's just needs a mezuzah some poskim say it's potter some people say it depends if they do other things in the shul like eat and sleep and <laughs> then they would need the, the base medrash but uh, temporary things basically don't need a mezuzah now what's interesting is what happens if you, if you put up a mezuzah on a doorway that doesn't need a mezuzah let's say there's two door posts, but there's no lentil on top. Right? So you put up, before there's a lentil on top, you put up a mezuzah on the doorway. So now I really didn't need a mezuzah. Right? Because you didn't have a lentil on top. Then you put the lentil on top. So you have to take down the mezuzah and make a new bracha. <coughs> Why? Because there's a din, what's called tasev leimin osui, it has to be you have to put up the mezuzah. It can't be... Remember, like we learned by sukkah, you can't put up the schach first and then, then put up the walls because you have to make the sukkah. You have to put up the mezuzah and not that the mezuzah is automatically put up. Also in tzitzit, I think. Huh? Tzitzit, a lot of things like that. Okay, next. Um, what? Oh, sorry. Bathhouse, bathrooms, mikvahs, don't need a mezuzah. But it depends. The outer door of a mikvah, let's say, would need. But the doors that lead in to the actual undressing rooms and all that obviously don't need a mezuzah. Just like, uh, just like uh, what you would call bathroom doesn't need a mezuzah. And the Fiyad Grab was in prison. They asked him, do you know where you are? <laughs> the Russian, the, the Jewish communists. Uh, he said to him, Rebbe, do you know where you are? He said, yeah, I'm in a place that doesn't need a mezuzah, just like a chicken coop. 
and, a, and an animal stall. He said, a barn, basically, he said, I'm in a room that doesn't need a mezuzah, just like an animal barn. He didn't care, he couldn't care. Okay. <laughs>